It's been a hard slog for these aged locomotives. They've done their time, but haven't been replaced because of a shortage of funds. Crumbling infrastructure and a shrinking productive sector meant to feed the railway line have also combined to leave the once vibrant rail company on the ropes. In recent years, the NRZ, like other state enterprises, has had to depend on the government to bail it out. But last month, President Robert Mugabe promised to shake things up. Another key priority for government as we strive to return the economy to sustained growth is the reform of parastatals and state enterprises. In this regard, government has now embarked on a program of parastatal reform, which has prioritized 10 strategic state enterprises to urgent attention. The troubled railway company could be one of the 10 up for change and that could position it well to capitalize on opportunities within the region. Zimbabwe can, is the cheapest route for Zambia, Botswana is the cheapest route for Malawi to transport goods from South Africa, which is the major trading partner for most of these countries. Mm -hmm. So the opportunities are there for them to, to move a lot of traffic. To achieve that, analysts say private sector partners should be engaged on a build, operate and transfer model while existing creditors are persuaded to swap their debt for equity to give the company breathing space to implement any turnaround plan. What is more important is that Zimbabwe must understand its strategic trajectory. Its strategic trajectory is to transport trading goods. So in that strategic trajectory, they must win off paths of NRZ, for instance, passenger transport. And they must also allow private players to come through. And when the private players come through, they take over the last mile of the NRZ. If the new boss is able to push that through, then the good times will be set to roll again. Farai Mokutuya, CCTV, Harare, Zimbabwe.